On the breakfast, the limitation of cash withdrawal of not more than 20,000 naira per day and 100,000 naira per week fixed by the Central Bank of Nigeria is legal null and void. According to a uh, legal practitioner, we'll have further uh, conversation on this ahead. Also in the breakfast, Speaker of the House of Representatives says the constitutional amendment process may not be concluded before the end of the 9th Assembly. And don't forget, we will be going through the pages of today's National Dailies, bringing you the latest headlines with analysis coming your way in off the press. All these ahead on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A very good morning to you. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning, and we have a lot in store for you as far as our discussions are concerned today. Um, I implore you to sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy yourself. As usual, we say take a cup of tea or coffee and um, just have a sip while you enjoy the show. Uh, my name is Kofi Bartel. So we'll get into the papers and into two major conversations as advertised ahead. But before that, let's uh, look at what a papers, um, sorry, a top trending uh, segment uh, has today. We usually, as we say, take the big stories off the social space and we bring them on the air uh, to discuss uh, the first one happens to do uh, with the uh, Theatre, Arts and Motion Pictures Practitioners Association of Nigeria. I don't know if you've heard that, uh, that group of that group before, uh, but they are there. They are there. They're called TAMPAN, Theatre, Arts and uh, Motion Pictures Association of Nigeria. And uh, legendary actor uh, is uh, quite a popular uh, man. He's probably known as Mr. Latin. All right, but um, his name, his government name, like some people will say, <laughs> his official name is uh, Bolaji Amusa. Um, he has been elected on a post as the president, national president of this association. He was uh, elated, so you know, spoke to the press and all that yesterday. And uh, what he says is that he will work tirelessly uh, towards advancing the association and further improving on actors' welfare. He will work tirelessly uh, towards advancing the association and uh, further improving on the welfare um, of actors in the country, which is a big issue. Um, he also said the health insurance schemes and cooperatives for members will also uh, be prioritized. Uh, uh, this is another very, very important issue. Um, just to take some of his words, he said, quote, uh, this is another opportunity to serve my people. Uh, this will be done selflessly just as before. He also said, quote, Tampan has made great improvement over the years uh, due to uh, cooperation of all members of the association. Uh, I appreciate everyone, uh, everyone for this. Uh, so that's uh, what the man had to say. He made a lot of promises. Um, he, yeah, it's not the first time he's um, holding this position of national president of Tampan. Mr. Latin had earlier, you know, run a four-year tenor, uh, and he is coming back for another four-year tenor. Um, he also said that some executives, other executives who were also returned unopposed, uh, he gave some names, so Odunla Dea Dekola as director, Motion Pictures, Shola Kosoko Abina as national auditor, and some other names um, that, that are out there. So it, it's good. Uh, uh, he said the, the, the election which was conducted in Oyo State uh, was credible, free and fair. I mean, I don't expect him to see any other thing. That's the election that brought him in. Huh? <laughs> All right. So um, that's, that's that. You know, we have different groups, you know, for, for those in the uh, film industry. Uh, uh, you know, Actors Guild of Nigeria is there. Uh, radio, theater, um, uh, workers Union, Radio and Theatre Work and Arts Workers Union, I forgot what it's called. Uh, Ratau is there as well. Uh, yo, I mean, the more the merrier, okay? Yeah, that's what I think. And um, these groups are there to, to protect the rights of, of workers and all that. It's, it's very important. Um, I don't know what Ratau is doing, you know, to protect the rights of uh, uh, media practitioners in the country. Maybe the, the modern day media uh, practitioners need to have another union. I mean, you know, to 
uh, agitate for the rights of media practitioners because that's, <laughs> that's very important. Um, media practitioners are going through a lot in Nigeria, um, going through a lot. So anyway, wish him the best. Uh, workers, sorry, uh, welfare of people in the movie industry, uh, motion picture industry, you want to call it, uh, and in theater arts is something to be uh, really taken seriously. Uh, welfare, welfare. A lot of them have had to, you know, come to the public or be brought to the public square. Uh, anytime they have an illness, an ailment, you know, and the like, just, you know, to plead for uh, uh, support from the public, uh, donations. And um, some of these things can easily be handled if you have uh, a health insurance scheme. I do not know uh, why they don't have that. You know, it's, it's very simple. Some 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, even 10,000 you know, can handle some of these things every month, you know, voluntary contribution. Um, so it's very important uh, to, for him to see how we can put them together. But I, I, I do not know. Also, um, some of these actors, uh, you know, leave, retire, and they go home to nothing. I do not know whether there's some sort of, uh, you know, pension scheme that can be put together to, to encourage the, the, uh, you know, to help the actors, those in the movie or motion picture and theater arts industry. I mean, there are some, uh, a lot of workers in different industries, um, they go to work, you know, six days a week, five days a week, uh, no health insurance, no pension arrangement, nothing. Uh, and the, the companies get away with it, you know. But these are people in the private sector. Uh, so it's important that... Uh, he looks into that. But question I have for, for, for Latin, Mr. Latin is, you were there for four years. <laughs> you were there for four years. You couldn't even do this. Four years, four years, four years. Yeah? Like uh, Style Plus Sun. They say four years don't work, huh? Yeah, we still the carry go. So you've come to tell people that you would um, you, you'd, uh, prioritize the health insurance scheme and cooperatives for members. You were there for four years. What did you do? <laughs> uh, please, she, she let us be. What did you do? No, no. You were there for four years. Now. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> so um, anyway, this is, this is where we are. Wish him the best. But the question on my mind is, if he could not do anything for four years, all these things he's saying, if he couldn't do them for four years, will he be able to do them in these second four years? I wish him the best, and I hope that he can achieve them and more and more. Mr. Latin. Uh, congratulations to you. Um, I'm, I'm also intrigued that he was returned on a post. Is that there are no people who to challenge him? This thing called on a post is, uh, it doesn't sit well with me. You know, we yeah, always see on a post in this country. People should oppose you so that it brings out the best in you, you know. But I wish him the best. Congratulations to him. Let's move on. Uh, Nigeria's federal government has announced, um, you know, uh, the relaxation of mandatory. COVID-19 uh, requirements or restrictions. Uh, um, this announcement came through the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. So that means that we're looking at the airports, okay? These are mandatory COVID-19 tests for those who are traveling, all right, through uh, the airport. It's called um, pre-arrival and post-arrival testing for COVID-19. It is no longer a prerequisite for travelers, uh, irrespective of their vaccination status so those who decided not to travel for the last two years and keep their money in the bank use it for other things rather than paying for this test and that test in london and in us and in dubai and in Nigeria, in lagos uh, i'm sure they, they can now travel take that money out and use it for something uh, good <laughs> but 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 i think it's also a welcome development to a lot of frequent travelers who have to spend more um, to, 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 to take these tests. Uh, the, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, uh, con, you know, released a letter. Uh, they addressed that letter to airline operators. And this is what the letter read. Uh, COVID-19 travel testing, pre-departure and post-arrival COVID-19 PCR tests are no longer required for all passengers irrespective of vaccination status. PCR tests required for all passengers who have been partial or not fully vaccinated have been, uh, have been suspended. Uh, so they also said that uh, aside from the suspension of these COVID-19 tests, 
uh, wearing a face mask is no longer mandatory for passengers on board aircraft. So I remember a lawyer friend of mine who went viral uh, for refusing to wear his mask in, in a flight and was promptly uh, subsequently ejected by an air hostess. <laughs> Very vocal lawyer friend of mine, you know, uh, he was stood on his rights, you know, said, I, how can you make me wear a mask and I won't wear the mask. And uh, the, the air hostess, young, young lady, called a soldier, take him out. <laughs> he was humbled. There's nothing he could do. You know, I'm sure that uh, he can now fly and not wear the mask. Like, he doesn't like wearing them. You know, all the conspiracy theorists can now rest uh, and all that. But, I mean, is this, is this um, early? Is it too early? It's a question to be asked. I don't know. I'm not... Uh, <laughs> I'm not an expert in this, in this, in this, in these things. Um, is this too early? Because COVID-19 is still uh, around. You know, the World Health Organization has not declared it over. Um, we see what is happening in China, where they are forced um, quarantines, and people are being dragged out of their homes to go uh, quarantine. They don't want to quarantine, and they have been forced. Um, so are we are we moving too fast? I mean, Nigeria is in the first country, even in the West, uh, where they seem to be uh, better at us at managing the health crisis. Uh, they have also relaxed on these things. So I think um, it's not strange if you look at a global, global trend. But um, we also need to still ask, um, are we in the clear? Is it uh, time yet to take these measures, uh, relax the measures of wearing a mask at the airport, uh, of uh, uh, you know, um, of uh, taking tests pre-arrival and post-arrival PCR tests. You know, there's a, a there's a, some strange malaria going around. I I know a couple of people who have been down with malaria. Uh, that's really really <laughs> serious. I just hope that it has nothing to do with COVID. Um, I hope so. But anyway, is is interesting. This is coming from the NCAA. I know that the uh, Minister of Health. Indeed, the NCDC, they've been talking, but um, it seems like someone noticed and brought to my attention that the, the updates you know, from the NCDC, the daily uh, infection rate that we were used to, being, uh, to, to getting from the NCDC, uh, yesterday wasn't there. They didn't update that on their website. So NCDC, what's going on? Is it that the person who is meant to be updating the website has gone on leave or they've forgotten? Or they relaxed, you know, uh, or, or what? I don't know. I don't know. But um, um, one of the countries, you know, that that we can look to, you know, if we're going to talk about the West, like I said earlier, um, happens to be the United Kingdom that uh, scrapped COVID-19 tests uh, some time ago. Uh, this was early this year, earlier this year in March. As a matter of fact, uh, people traveling to the United Kingdom, including Nigerians. Uh, in March, we're no longer required to show evidence of COVID-19 uh, tests or proof of vaccination as a precondition for entering the country. Uh, so that was an advisory uh, they released in the UK. Uh, it's called a Travel Abroad Guide, you know, published on the UK government website. It came into effect on the 18th of March, uh, 2022. All right. So um, I think we can say that, yes, a global trend towards, um, you know, moving towards uh, relaxing these measures. So that's that. Um, in Hong Kong, for instance, too, they also uh, released uh, uh, protocols some time ago. Um, and, and that's another example of a country that has uh, relaxed its uh, measures. Um, the federal government had earlier also itself stopped these uh, mandatory tests. Um, sorry, they relaxed these measures of wearing masks in public places. But the airports were where the focus was on because, of course, that's the entry point for anyone who will be coming to the country uh, with uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, to spread <laughs> and to infect people with. So that's that. We'll leave it at that and we'll move on. Um, uh, we do hope that when we hear about any spike or any new issue with COVID-19, because people have gone through a lot already. You know, remember the days of, um, of, of, of lockdown? <laughs> uh, it, was, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny at all. These are things that our children, our children's children, those yet unborn will tell them, and they'll be wondering, like, ah, okay, they said it was a time they were not allowed to go out. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. We thank God for, for his grace. Let's move on. The Lagos Ibado Expressway has been a, a source of worry, a source of um, anguish, a source of pain, literally, you know, a source of depression for some people. 
um, because of the traffic congestion or congestion on that uh, road. It's, it's, it's been traffic gridlock, you know, day in, day out. Uh, it's been traffic jam day in, day out. I know some people who use some part of that road to get into Lagos and they were on the road, a um, journey of maybe 30, 45 minutes. They spent seven hours just to get into, you know, Lagos, main Lagos, spent seven hours. That's uh, really, really worrying. So, well, the construction has been known. Um, the latest is that the federal government, we're told, um, and through the Federal Ministry of Works, uh, has removed the barriers and sections of uh, uh, this road, which are under construction. This is section one. All right, section one. This, according to the Federal Ministry of Works, yesterday they did the removal of the barriers. Um, it's reported that uh, heavy duty equipment were used to crush the barriers and other diversion points for free flow of traffic uh, at the OPIC U turn end of the highway. That OPIC U turn, one day, it caused them, it was a Friday. The traffic was everywhere in Lagos from that uh, Ojodubega area, OPIC area, all the way to uh, Ojota, then all the way to all the Magodo areas of Lagos, down to the third mainland bridge, down to Ikoi, there was traffic jam. Then also those heading from Ojota uh, to Ikorodu Road, in Yaba and all that, everywhere was locked. Those who wanted to use Ikorodu Road to get to um, uh, to Ojota and then to get to mile 12, K2 and all those places, or to get into Bega, it was locked down, all right? Uh, all the way down to Jibo on the corridor road into Yaba, locked down, Third Mainland Bridge, locked down because of one U-turn that I was told was put there by the Federal Controller of Works in, in Lagos State. Uh, I don't know if, if that is true. Um, and people were stuck. So these things have been there. If, if there's a U-turn that's been blocked and it's been making it difficult for people to, 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 to go home easily or go to work easily or enter Lagos State easily, then, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to get those U-turns out. But uh, it reminds me of the, those roundabouts on the Lakey, Lakey Corridor. Uh, you know, there were some roundabouts that uh, were put there by Fashola, then governor of Lagos State, who is now the Minister of Works. <laughs> so maybe it's affliction rising, rising a second time. Huh? <laughs> um, and the next governor came, I think it was uh, Ambode, and he, he destroyed those uh, roundabouts and make, made it easier for people to move from Lekki towards uh, Aja and Ekpe and other parts of uh, that Lekki corridor. Well, uh, they've removed the U-turn barriers, they've crushed them, uh, you know, other diversion points, the barriers are placed there for free flow of traffic and it will be a relief to motorists uh, who spend long hours, long hours on the gridlock. I mean, last week, a friend of mine, a, a buddy of mine was there for seven hours. He's gotten to Lagos State already. Seven hours, that's to a 30, 40 minute journey, you know. So, I mean, wisdom is profitable to direct. Thank God that they've finally seen wisdom in, 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 in doing the needful. Um, the director of Federal Highways in the Southwest, his name is uh, Mr. De Damolakuti, um, while he was supervising the whole thing. So the government earlier promised to reopen the highway to traffic on Thursday, but uh, brought the date forward to ease the graphic, uh, traffic gridlock. Um, he's also saying that because of the festive season, uh, all obstructions on section one, section one uh, of that route, which spanned Ojota, Lagos to Shagamu interchange in Ogun State uh, were being removed because of the festive season. People are going to be traveling in and traveling out. They don't want uh, any obstruction. They want to make it easier for people. Okay, I, I don't know. Are they going to get these barriers back and block those U-turns uh, after the festive period? <laughs> it's a question I'd like to, uh, uh, to ask. Um, they are also stopping the construction on Section 2 of the project. Uh, that's from the Shagamu interchange uh, to Ojo in uh, Ibadan, your state, also just to help people move smoothly and easily. A lot of people are tired of this. This, this I mean, there's some people who have heard, known of Lagos Ibadan Expressway project all their lives, all their lives, you know. When are they going to finish this road? Is the question. We were when they should tell when, you know, it's, it's taking too long. 
sub, sub, um, you know, successive administrations have had such projects, you know, every year we hear they're constructing one thing, one thing or the other. And this is a very important road, you know, and um, we just need to bring this to an end. I mean, things that take, should take ordinarily a year or two years in this country uh, will take, will take, will take five years, six years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, and um, government hasn't completed it. I mean, if government is a continuum, all right, like we hear them say, even if there's a change in administration, even a change in political party at the center, if there's a project already ongoing, then it should continue. And it should end on time. Look at the, the, the second Niger Bridge. You know, how many years has it taken? You know, some people are, are graduates today, and, but I think predates them. So, so we need to see excellence in all we do. Projects that should take one year. You know, this is 2022. The entire world is moving fast. We can't be dilly dallying around these things and we're going to do one road, road, one road. They go see Expressway. One road. One. How many kilometers? All these years. You know, it's terrible. And then we're hearing that people are being kidnapped on that road. You know, it's, it's sad. It's sad. Anyway, let's see what happens. Um, they are targeting the delivery of this project in the first quarter of 2023. You know, something tells me they won't, they won't hit that target, as usual. <laughs> oh, my God, as usual. All right. They're targeting the first quarter of 2023. They can't even tell us a month. You know, something tells me they won't hit that. I mean, I would like to be proven wrong, yeah, but something tells me they won't hit that. I mean, you know, so see, when you see these things happening in the country, it's the best way to cope with it is just to laugh. Use it as comedy and laugh. Um... They're going to return to site in January, okay, after the Yuletide, and they're hoping to complete it, targeting uh, first quarter of 2023. <laughs> if they do, I don't know what I'll do on air. Um, I don't know. What should I do? Shave my beard? <laughs> All right, that's the much we can take on our top trending segment. Um, we'll be back uh, to look at what the papers have to say. Uh, we have interesting analysis of those headlines. Please stay with us.